Street art is one of the most recognisable forms of art in the world today, largely because of artists like Banksy. But Banksy's rise to fame is in part due to his former agent Steve Lazaridis, a London-based curator whose gallery has just celebrated a decade of art he helped put on the street. Bell Lupton caught up with him. Street art, it's become part of the everyday landscape of cities across the world. It may still be illegal in some places, but the public has embraced this art form. So much so that a bank scene now sells for hundreds of thousands of dollars. These days we're used to walking down the street and seeing things like this. But what we're not used to is walking into a gallery and seeing it on the walls. Steve Lazaridis is the man who made Banksy a bankable commodity when he started selling the graffiti artist's prints a decade ago. We got laughed, ridiculed, told this would never work on so many occasions. But even back then, even at the beginning, 10 years ago, we still had like massive collectors coming in and buying stuff off us. So, you know, they, I put the phone down on Damien Hirst four times when I first started out because I just thought it was a crank call. It's like, no, 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 please don't put the phone down again. It is Damien Hirst, and I do want to come by the studio and buy some works. Now, Lazaridis is putting on a show of the artists he's represented over the last 10 years. He parted ways with Banksy in 2008, but has held on to some of his works. A set of iconic images. He attributes Banksy's success to its populism. I get really really annoyed when people think populism is a bad thing because sometimes it just means that people like it and that that's not just one type of person that's right the way across the board a decade later artists like banksy are no longer outsiders top tier auction houses like bonhams and sotheby's have held sales of their work if it suddenly moves into the gallery, does that mean that it's falling into the trap it didn't want to fall into? Well, I think that the danger it has more than being in the galleries is the danger of becoming over corporatized in a kind of graffiti level where suddenly, you know, from car manufacturers to energy drinks, if they want to illustrate urban, I think that's it. If you want one thing that I like working with, it's people that are innovators. Banksy took a move, a scene and start doing stencils. JR does paste-ups. Invader tiles invaders onto the wall. Veals downstairs that chops things out of walls. Like these guys are so far ahead of the game that I don't think you can even consider them in the same kind of, you, you know, they're playing a different game to, to, to everyone else. Lazaridis fell into art dealing after working as a commercial photographer and a painter decorator. He says his artists sell prints of their works so they can fund projects on the streets. Artists have to eat, so are they always beholden in some way, shape or form to the people who will pay for their artwork? That's my argument, normally. <laughs> that, that, that's the one I've had for years when people say this is terrible and it's just brought into the gallery. No, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with people doing it to make a living out of it, but it's just not fine art at that level. So when did you first meet JR? Almost exactly a decade ago, I think. So I was introduced by Remy, who kept sending me his work, and I kept binning it. So I'm like, there's no way I'm representing a photographer, having been a photographer myself. And then he sent me through these pictures that he'd done in Africa called Women Are Heroes. And then it just kind of went from there. And then it, this picture was still one of my favourites from the last decade. We got onto the front of the um, Tate Modern for something they were doing there. But it almost got um, binned because they wouldn't have a black man on the front of it with a gun. Gun? No. Camera? Yes. French artist JR pasted this photo onto the wall of the Paris housing project where the 2005 riots started. As well as the street art, there's also a lot of contemporary art. Yeah, I, I think for my thing, it, it was never about just street arts. It was more to do with the philosophy and like the artists that were... They, they had a certain sense of freedom and irreverence and they weren't bound by what was seen as the constraints of the art world. So, you, you know... Even someone like Jonathan Yeo, who's now, you know, been in the National Portrait Gallery, he's got museum shows going on everywhere. He was a self-taught painter, so like, he'd never gone to art schools. I think the main reason for setting up the gallery was to give a, a space where people that couldn't get an exhibition that we could show that we liked. Where's the money coming from now? Well, who are your buyers? Oh, right away across the board. It always has been from... We had some crazy tech guys come in the other day, 
from very established uh, Jewish collectors that have been fantastic to us over the years. What we don't tend to have is, tr is trophy hunters. And my thing is, is that I don't work with any arts I don't like, but I also don't really sell art to people I don't like. My life's too short. Steve Lazaridis, thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you for coming by the gallery.